In mathematics, a hypercomplex number is a traditional term for an element of a unital algebra over the field of real numbers. The study of hypercomplex numbers in the late 19th century forms the basis of modern group representation theory. History In the 19th century number systems called quaternions, tesserines, coquaternions, biquaternions, and doctinians became established concepts in mathematical literature, added to the real and complex numbers. The concept of a hypercomplex number covered them all, and called for a discipline to explain and classify them. The cataloging project began in 1872 when Benjamin Pierce first published his linear associative algebra, and was carried forward by his son Charles Sanders Pierce. Most significantly, they identified the nilpotent and the idempotent elements as useful hypercomplex numbers for classifications. The Cayley-Dixon construction used involutions to generate complex numbers, quaternions, and octonions out of the real number system. Hurwitz and Frobenius proved theorems that put limits on hypercomplexity. Hurwitz's theorem, and Frobenius' theorem. Finally in 1958 J. Frank Adams used topological methods to prove that there exist only four finite-dimensional real division algebras the rails, the complexes, the quaternions, and the octonions. It was matrix algebra that harnessed the hypercomplex systems. First matrices contributed new hypercomplex numbers like 2 times 2 real matrices. Soon the matrix paradigm began to explain the others as they became represented by matrices and their operations. In 1907 Joseph Wedderburn showed that associative hypercomplex systems could be represented by matrices, or direct sums of systems of matrices. From that date the preferred term for a hypercomplex system became associative algebra as seen in the title of Wedderburn's thesis at University of Edinburgh. Note however, that non-associative systems like octonians and hyperbolic quaternions represent another type of hypercomplex number. As Hawkins explains, the hypercomplex numbers are stepping stones to learning about Lie groups and group representation theory. For instance, in 1929 M.E. Noether wrote on hypercomplex quantities and representation theory. In 1973 Cantor and Solodovnikov published a textbook on hypercomplex numbers which was translated in 1989. Karen Parshall has written a detailed exposition of the heyday of hypercomplex numbers, including the role of such luminaries as Theodore Moline and Edouard Study. For the transition to modern algebra, Bartle van der Weyden devotes 30 pages to hypercomplex numbers in his History of Algebra. Definition A definition of a hypercomplex number is given by Cantor and Solodovnikov as an element of a finite-dimensional algebra over the real numbers that is, unital and distributive. Elements are generated with real number coefficients for a basis. Where possible, it is conventional to choose the basis so that a technical approach to hypercomplex numbers directs attention first to those of dimension 2, two-dimensional real algebras. Theorem Up to isomorphism, there are exactly three two-dimensional unital algebras over the rails. The ordinary complex numbers, the split complex numbers, and the dual numbers. Proof since the algebra is two-dimensional, we can pick the basis, 1, u. Since the algebra is closed under squaring, the non-real basis element u squares to a linear combination of 1 and u. For some real numbers a0 and a1, using the common method of completing the square by subtracting a 1u and adding the quadratic complement a12, 4 to both sides yields so that the three cases depend on this real value. If 4a0 equals minus a12, the above formula yields u2 equals 0. Hence, u can directly be identified with the nilpotent element of the basis of the dual numbers. If 4a0 greater than minus a12, the above formula yields u2 greater than 0. This leads to the split complex numbers which have normalized basis with. To obtain j from u, the latter must be divided by the positive real number which has the same square as u has. 
If 4a0 less than minus a12, the above formula yields u2 less than 0. This leads to the complex numbers which have normalized basis with to yield i from u. The latter has to be divided by a positive real number which squares to the negative of u2. The complex numbers are the only two-dimensional hypercomplex algebra that is a field. Algebra such as the split complex numbers that include non-real roots of 1 also contain idempotents and zero divisors. So such algebras cannot be division algebras. However, these properties can turn out to be very meaningful, for instance in describing the Lorentz transformations of special relativity. In a 2004 edition of Mathematics magazine the two-dimensional real algebras have been styled the generalized complex numbers. The idea of cross-ratio of four complex numbers can be extended to the two-dimensional real algebras. Higher dimensional examples Clifford algebras A Clifford algebra is the unital associative algebra generated over an underlying vector space equipped with a quadratic form. Over the real numbers this is equivalent to being able to define a symmetric scalar product. UV equals one half that can be used to orthogonalize the quadratic form to give a set of bases E1, ek, such that imposing closure under multiplication generates a multivector space spanned by a basis of 2k elements 1, E1, E2, E3, E1, E2, E1, E2, E3. These can be interpreted as the basis of a hypercomplex number system. Unlike the basis E1, ek, the remaining basis elements may or may not anti-commute, depending on how many simple exchanges must be carried out to swap the two factors. So E1, E2 equals minus E2, E1, but E1 equals plus E1. Putting aside the basis for which A2 equals 0, the remaining Clifford algebras can be identified by the label CPQ, indicating that the algebra is constructed from P simple basis elements with A2 equals plus 1, Q with A2 equals minus 1, and where R indicates that this is to be a Clifford algebra over the rails, i.e., coefficients of elements of the algebra are to be real numbers. These algebras, called geometric algebras, form a systematic set, which turn out to be very useful in physics problems which involve rotations, phases, or spins, notably in classical and quantum mechanics, electromagnetic theory and relativity. Examples include, the complex number C0, 1, split complex number C1, 0, quaternion C0, 2, split biquaternion C0, 3, coquaternion C1, 1 C2, 0, C3, 0, and the space-time algebra C1, 3. The elements of the algebra C, P, Q form an even subalgebra C0, Q plus 1, P of the algebra C, Q plus 1, P, which can be used to parametrize rotations in the larger algebra. There is thus a close connection between complex numbers and rotations in two-dimensional space, between quaternions and rotations in three-dimensional space between split complex numbers and rotations in one plus one-dimensional space, and so on. Whereas Cayley Dixon and split complex constructs with eight or more dimensions are not associative with respect to multiplication, Clifford algebras retain associativity at any number of dimensions. In 1995 Ian R. Porteous wrote on the recognition of subalgebras in his book on Clifford algebras. His proposition 11.4 summarizes the hypercomplex cases. Let A be a real associative algebra with unit element 1. Then 1 generates R. Any two-dimensional subalgebra generated by an element E0 of A such that E02 equals minus 1 is isomorphic to C. Any two-dimensional subalgebra generated by an element E0 of A such that E02 equals 1 is isomorphic to 2R. Any four-dimensional subalgebra generated by a set E0, E1 of mutually anti-commuting elements of A such that is isomorphic to H.
any four-dimensional subalgebra generated by a set E0, E1, of mutually anti-commuting elements of A such that is isomorphic to M2. Any eight-dimensional subalgebra generated by a set E0, E1, E2, of mutually anti-commuting elements of A such that is isomorphic to 2H. Any eight-dimensional subalgebra generated by a set E0, E1, E2, of mutually anti-commuting elements of A such that is isomorphic to M2. For extension beyond the classical algebras, see classification of Clifford algebras. Cayley Dixon construction all of the Clifford algebra CPQ apart from the real numbers. Complex numbers and the quaternions contain non-real elements that square to plus 1, and so cannot be division algebras. A different approach to extending the complex numbers is taken by the Cayley Dixon construction. This generates number systems of dimension 2n, n in, 2, 3, 4, with bases, where all the non-real basis elements anti-commute and satisfy. In eight or more dimensions these algebras are non-associative. In 16 or more dimensions these algebras also have zero divisors. The first algebras in this sequence are the four-dimensional quaternions, eight-dimensional octonions, and sixteen-dimensional sedonions. An algebraic symmetry is lost with each increase in dimensionality. Quaternion multiplication is not commutative, octonion multiplication is non-associative, and the norm of sedonions is not multiplicative. The Cayley-Dixon construction can be modified by inserting an extra sign at some stages. It then generates two of the split algebras in the collection of composition algebras. Split quaternions with bases satisfying, and split octonions with bases satisfying. As with quaternions, split quaternions are not commutative, but further contain nil potents. They are isomorphic to the 2 times 2 real matrices. Split octonions are non-associative and contain nil potents. Tensor products The tensor product of any two algebras is another algebra, which can be used to produce many more examples of hypercomplex number systems. In particular taking tensor products with the complex numbers leads to four-dimensional tesserines, eight-dimensional biquaternions, and sixteen-dimensional complex octonions. Further examples by complex numbers a 4D vector space over the rails, or 2D over the complex numbers. Multi-complex numbers. 2N minus 1 dimensional vector spaces over the complex numbers. Composition algebra. Algebras with a quadratic form that composes with the product. 